Later, it's a Tonight Show you won't want to miss with Richard Dreyfus, Angie Harmon, and the music of Tracy Chapman. But first, your local news is next. Fire and smoke race through a Chicago high-rise, sparking a frantic effort to save those trapped inside. A home video look at the rescue, plus new reports of fire code violations in the Channel 5 News. NBC5, Chicago. Now live from the NBC Tower, this is the Channel 5 News at 10. Tonight, storm watch, a weather roller coaster spinning freezing rain our way, and bitter cold is next. But first, a deadly high-rise fire and cries of terror as trapped residents jump for their lives and those below frantically try to save them. I was trying to catch anyone that was jumping. There wasn't no particular one. I was just trying to catch some humans coming out. Good evening, I'm Carol Marine. And I'm Ron Major. Fire officials say careless smoking is to blame for the blaze that killed four people at the Lake Grove Village Apartments. It was just after 3 in the morning when flames broke out at 3555 South Cottage Grove Avenue. Panicked residents jumped for their lives. Firefighters scrambled to save those trapped on the smoke-filled floors. Many waved sheets and towels to signal for help. We hung out the window and hollered down to um, get the firemen to help us. Even on the ladder, firefighters struggled to get residents down safely. The four people killed include a 10-year-old boy, his mother, and two other women. 61 people injured, and hundreds of people who lived in that high-rise are now homeless. So for many, the first night following this destructive fire was time to find a new place to stay. Renee Ferguson joins us now from 35th and Cottage Grove with the latest. Renee? Well, Carol, last night there was fire. Tonight there is ice. The cold weather adds insult to injury for all 500 residents of this apartment building who just tonight were told that they all have to leave. Tonight, reality sinks in. For 68-year-old Vida Stewart, patients and her belongings in plastic bags are what's left. Things happen to make us appreciate life better. I'm alive. Home had been on the eighth floor of Lake Grove Village Apartments for Dorothy lift. Ford. I, uh, Tonight, say, where to go uh, was a question she asked State Representative Lou Jones. Have you been over to the office and signed up? No, I haven't been over there. Don't worry about it. That's where you got to go. It's been 19 hours since the choking smoke and deadly flames roared through this apartment building. Not yet a whole day since Tony Burnett climbed down a fireman's ladder to safety, only to realize that his mother and brother were not behind him. He later learned they died. They were trapped inside by the smoke. We was, we was at the window, but I think my mother passed out of my little brother. Susan Williams and Sharon Smith found comfort in the presence of a famous preacher, but even his counsel could not spare Smith the grief of learning that her child had died. I'm thinking that my son was in there because I just came home from work and it looks like my apartment. I don't know if it's smoke or, but Apparently it looks like my apartment. The, the stories of heroics were many and tonight they continue. A shelter with cots is set up for the homeless a few blocks away. And in the laundry room, some kids console themselves with a song. They're practicing, they say, to sing at the funeral. <laughs> Fire Commissioner Raymond Orozco said this building was not required to have sprinklers, and he said that some of the smoke detectors were found without batteries. There will be more of an investigation beginning tomorrow. Reporting live from 35th and Cottage Grove, Renee Ferguson, Channel 5 News. All right, thank you, Renee. It certainly appeared to be frightening from the outside, and imagine what it must have been like to be trapped inside that burning building. Tonight, one resident's dramatic home video takes us into the eye of the fire. And Channel 5, Sharon Wright has the story. Keep the store, do not close the store. Oh, no, no, don't close that door. This, this is the only thing I got. We ain't gonna close That's firefighter Ozzie Moran crawling down the hall, answering the calls of the two little kids in apartment 606 next door. All the while, the inferno raged, ripping through the fifth floor below. We heard children in the apartment right next to us. It was children over there. They wanted to get out. That was Melek Henderson's first encounter with firefighter Moran in his own living room. Trapped inside, Henderson had pulled out his camera the minute he realized his building was ablaze. He watched the drama unfold through its lens. It was, you know, 
It was horrible. Everyone was screaming, breaking windows. When firefighters arrived, Henderson's neighbors crowded the windows, trying to flag them down. As the hook and ladder truck reached his sixth floor, there was not only relief, but Henderson joined in the rescue efforts, carrying a little boy and girl to safety. He was scared. You could tell he was scared, so the stiff, you know, and I was trying not to slip because the ladder was awkward, never been on a fireman ladder. Henderson tells me he found a courage he didn't know he had, and a lesson, too. Life is not guaranteed, you know, so I got to live each day to the fullest because when you look deaf in the eye, like, you know, because, you know, the monster, you know, that's a monster, that fire, the smoke, wake you up to reality. Sharon Wright, Channel 5 News. Many residents of the burning high-rise are alive tonight thanks to acts of heroism. Um, uh, heroism. Among them, 8-year-old Linda Foster, who was caught by a firefighter as she jumped from a sixth-floor window. Looked down for a second to tell the company boy me to hold a ladder, to heal a ladder. I looked up, the next thing I noticed, kids coming down, jumped, either jumped or fell out of the window. I stuck my arm out, somehow snagged her, hung on to her until I can get her down. Brought her down the ladder. She was crying, just told her to hang on to me, I'll hang on to you. And we're not going to go anywhere. And uh, she did what I told her to do. And we got down. Somehow I caught her. I don't know how I did. And we hung on. And uh, everything worked out for the best. Because of that firefighter's bravery, Linda Foster is in good condition. Her mother, however, died when she jumped from the same sixth floor window. And our Unit 5 investigative team has learned that the building at 3555 South Cottage Grove was well known to city fire inspectors. Court records obtained by Unit 5 show numerous citations for code violations, perhaps the most ominous one from January 10th of last year, failure to install and maintain smoke detectors. Today, fire officials confirmed many apartments did not have working smoke detectors. And tonight, Unit 5 has learned that since the fire, investigators have counted 18 more code violations. Those will be added to the city complaint, which is scheduled for a hearing tomorrow. For all those people who live in high-rise buildings, there are steps you can take to protect yourself in the event of a fire. Channel 5's Nasita Kwan is here with that story. Nasita? Carol, it is understandable that panic is often the first response when someone's life is in danger. But one of the best ways to stay calm and perhaps save your life in a potentially deadly situation is to know exactly what to do. If you were in a high-rise and this happened, what's the first thing you'd do? Would you be able to find the nearest stairwell if it was too smoky to see? You've got to plan for this emergency before it happens. You know, uh, you have to know the layout of the building. You have to be sure that you know exactly, count the number of doors from your apartment to the stairwell. And take a minute to find the fire information that high-rise managers have to post. If the smoke is heavy, you should stay inside the apartment, uh, seal the door with, uh, with wet towels. Manager John Beeg reads from the list posted at Lake Meadows' apartment and points out the floor plan that could save a high-rise resident from deadly confusion if there was a fire. But it's just as important to know when the best thing to do is stay where you are and do everything you can to let firefighters know you need help. Get to a window. Take a sheet, light uh, colored cloth, anything, wave, wave it out the window to call attention to our firefighters. And if you're trapped, also dial 911 and let the dispatchers know. One other crucial reminder, never, never use the elevator during a fire. Carol? Nasita, thank you. From safety violations to the hundreds of residents now without a home, we will have more on this high-rise fire on South Cottage Grove tomorrow on the Channel 5 News. The other big story of this night, bizarre weather extremes from balmy spring-like temperatures in the 60s to blustery wind-blown sleet and sub-zero wind chills. And it's only just begun. Stormwatch coverage begins with Robin George live from Randolph and Lakeshore Drive. Robin? Well, Ron, this is the Chicago Yacht Club by summer, a staging area for snow plows and salt trucks by winter. You know those big puddles left by all the melting snow and rain we had this morning are starting to freeze over tonight. Just one of the problems caused by this crazy weather. Crazy even for Chicago. Rain this morning is ice tonight. Light overcoats were enough this morning. Heavy winter coats are required tonight. You can run uh, at any temperature if you're correctly layered. And I've got many of them on tonight. It's pretty bizarre, actually, to wake up in the morning and leave and it's spring-like out to come home and it's freezing cold. What happens when temperatures drop 40 degrees in a day? Streets fast become slippery and slick. When I was downtown just recently, I slipped and fell. Salt trucks are out in force, going over and over the main streets. 
but side streets can catch a driver off guard. Don't give yourself enough room to stop, and you can slide right into the car in front of you. At O'Hare, airlines canceled 25% of their flights in anticipation of sleet and snow. High winds, heavy rains, and plummeting temperatures are enough to strand another round of passengers at Camp O'Hare. And the winds are gusty enough tonight that our camera crew had to strap down some of the equipment. Right now, light flurries. They're saying we could get one to three inches by morning. Reporting live from Randolph and Lakeshore Drive, Robin George, Channel 5 News. Thank you, Robin. Channel 5's Andy Avalos is in the Weather Center. Andy, the big focus, dramatic drop in temperatures. Carol, you're right. Readings have been dropping throughout the afternoon hours. We'll take a look at temperatures as of 11 o'clock this morning. And the reading in Chicago was 60 degrees. Meanwhile, to the west in Des Moines, single digits, a reading of 5. Now, these are the current temperatures, 15 at O'Hare, 1 below in Des Moines. Now, of course, the winds are still fairly strong, as we saw with Robin's live report. When you calculate the winds and the temperatures, wind chill readings, 14 below here. But look at the 45 below to the west of us in Des Moines. That cold air will be here through the overnight hours and into tomorrow. We saw some snow as well. We'll tell you how much in just a little bit. Ron and Carol? Thanks, Andy. Their little boy died while in the care of his babysitter. Ahead, why would the parents fight to help that woman regain custody of her own children? A Unit 5 special report coming up. Plus, the First Lady goes one-on-one -on -one with the Chicago Press Corps. And next, two men wanted in a crime spree in a Chicago neighborhood. The Channel 5 News is brought to you in part by Ameritech. Joe, the Speedy Messenger Service just hit a speed bump. What do you mean? This is great. The phone's ringing off the hook. That's exactly why our biggest account is leaving us. What? I don't understand. They said they've been having problems getting through to us. I don't get it. If they couldn't get through, then how'd you find out? I got a letter this morning. Delivered by their new messenger service. Ameritech, your link to better communication. For those accustomed to the very best, the car of choice is the Accord EX V6. The leather-trimmed interior provides the utmost in luxury. The 170 horses offer exhilarating power. And the ABS and precision handling assure you'll always be in control. Excellent choice, James. Take the day off. Thank you, sir. See the Accord EX V6 at your Honda dealer. What people who are driven drive. The Channel 5 News is brought to you in part by Children's Memorial Hospital. I like those kind of spice. I think it's a bird flying in my ear. A kangaroo is jumping in here. At Children's, we're a leader in more than 30 pediatric specialties. We also speak kid. I have a sneak. When it comes to treating children, there really is only one. Now in Chicago and suburban locations. Police are searching for two men believed to be responsible for a 10-month crime spree in the Lakeview neighborhood. Belmont area detectives are circulating composite sketches of the suspects. There are a total of three sexual assaults and three armed robberies since last April, but police believe there are two different men committing those crimes. 7th Congressional District Representative Curtis Collins is tonight calling for a probe into the federal sting-like Operation Silver Shovel. In a letter today to Congressional Committee on Government Reform, Collins asked that federal dollars be used to clean up any dangerous materials that were dumped during that sting that investigated the illegal dumping. The Congresswoman also says she contacted Attorney General Janet Reno and the Environmental Protection Agency about her concerns. First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton left Chicago this evening for New York to continue the tour to promote her book, It Takes a Village. Some of the proceeds from the book will be donated to La Rabita Children's Hospital, where the First Lady spent some time this morning. Following her visit with the patients, she met one-on-one -on -one with local reporters. Some of Chicago's best-known television faces gathered in the lobby of the Sheraton Hotel. We were then escorted up the elevator to the hallway outside the suite where the interviews would be conducted. Each of us, in turn, only five minutes per interview. We had to get to the point quickly. So you got this line of local reporters out there, each one waiting because you're going to confess something horrible to one of us. So why don't you just make it me? Well, that didn't work. The First Lady is in town to promote her new book, but she is well prepared for all other questions. What did you say to your aides about the travel staff that may have left them with the impression you wanted everybody fired? 
I don't know because I really don't remember the exact words I used, but it was to express concern. I did not have any role in making the decision or in telling anybody to do any particular thing. But I guess now that I've been in the White House and I see how things are magnified the way they are, just the expression of concern or an offhand comment could be blown out of proportion. Mrs. Clinton characterizes the current attacks against her as a blizzard of accusations that will be proven to be without substance. I had in Health Watch bad news about the dietary supplement beta carotene. And next, a family's fight they for the babysitter who some say that's killed that's their little boy. It's a Unit 5 special know, report. Know, next. Listen to how you could win a grand prize of one of a hundred trips for two to L.A. to see a live filming of Friends or thousands of other great prizes by specially marked packages of Diet Coke. Watch the Diet Coke commercial during Friends on January 11th, 18th, 25th, and 28th. See if one of them drinks it. Match the name under the cap with the Friends character who drinks the Diet Coke in the Diet Coke commercial each week, and you're a winner. Who's going to drink the Diet Coke? Watch Friends. Carol? changing thanks to Remax. Experienced Remax associates can help find the home that's right for you, whether it's just around the corner or on the other side of the world. That's the power of the Remax network and real estate's top producers. The votes are in. Leaving Las Vegas is the winner of the best picture of the year. Winner, best actor of the year and winner Best Actress of the Year, Leading Las Vegas, a love story. Rated R, now playing at select theaters. The critics have spoken. Richard III is brilliant, outstanding, four stars, breathtaking, and a Golden Globe nominee for Best Actor, Richard III, Rated R, now playing. In depth tonight, a new development in a Unit 5 investigation into the death of a one-year-old child. We first told you the story in an exclusive report last night. Tonight, there is a political twist. And John Mason is here with the story. Ron Carroll, Nancy Phillip, wife of Senate President Pate Phillip, sat in Cook County Juvenile Court today in support of the woman suspected in Jojo Martirano's death. But Cook County Public Guardian Patrick Murphy asked for a mistrial in the case because Mrs. Phillip was in the courtroom. After being ordered out of court, Nancy Phillip told me her husband had conversations with Cook County State's Attorney Jack O'Malley about where this case was going. When Jojo Martirano died, part of Joe and Peggy Martirano died too. A little boy collapsed while in the care of his babysitter, and the Martiranos are angry. That's not surprising. It is where that anger is focused that may surprise you. It had nothing to do with the care of this woman. Joe Martirano grieves for his son, but he and his wife Peggy don't blame babysitter Sharon Gornick for JoJo's death. JoJo was their only child. He loved his bats, he loved to play games, he loved our cat, chased our cat all over our house. Th that's the irony, that a, a, a child who could only give love is being used to destroy innocent people, and that's wrong. Jojo Martirano collapsed while in the care of Sharon Gornick 14 months ago. An autopsy showed the boy had subdural hematomas, bleeding under the skull, also hemorrhages in his eyes, classic signs of child abuse. The medical examiner ruled Jojo's death a homicide. Though she hasn't been charged with any crime, Sharon Gornick's own children have been removed from the Gornick home by DCFS. And it's possible the Gornick's newborn, due in the next four weeks, could be taken as well. Doctors retained by the Gornick say JoJo's death is not child abuse. Dr. Stephen Dutton is a pediatrician and medical examiner in Atlanta. And I don't believe there is any good evidence that anyone has injured this child. I think his death is a result of 
complication of the disease he was born with. JoJo's parents agree their son had a brittle bone disease called osteogenesis imperfecta. They say JoJo had been sick for three weeks leading up to his death with vomiting, irritability, and headaches. We took him three weeks, as you know, to the hospital. I mean, six times in three weeks. And if anything, we were, very, we were angry with doctors who, whose care for him was substandard and told us he had the flu. And we don't hold Sharon responsible for our son's death. More than that, the two couples affected by JoJo's death feel the other's pain. And that is the thread that runs through this tragedy, no matter how the little boy died. I want this pain to be over for them. I don't know what his mother feels. God forbid, I've never lost my own child, because I've grieved for him. And I go to his grave. Even if the Gornick's court fight for their kids ends soon, and they hope it does, the death of JoJo could be the subject of legal proceedings for months, even years. His parents, who, as you heard, hold doctors responsible for his death, will likely sue those doctors sometime this year. Ron, Kara, thank you. Thank you, John. In tonight's Channel 5 Health Watch, a warning about the dietary supplement beta-carotene. Researchers at the National Cancer Institute say a just-concluded study shows beta-carotene does not protect against cancer or heart disease. And what's worse, they say, the study found smokers who took high doses of beta-carotene showed a 28% higher incidence of lung cancer. The findings are similar to those of a 1994 Finnish study, which first questioned beta-carotene safety. Well, that's a classic cold front that roared through here today. One of the most dramatic temperature changes in such a short period of time that I have ever seen. I think, in fact, most of us have ever seen. Take a look at this right now, live in the heart of the loop at NBC Tower. Weather Tracker checks in with a temperature of 15 degrees right now. Still a very brisk southwest wind, 18 below the windshield right now. Still a little bit of snow showing up in the area, but not a lot. Doppler radar picking up a little bit of snow in portions of Cook County, DuPage County, and Will County. This will be the trend throughout the nighttime hours. We will see little areas of snowfall, but I don't think we'll see much in the way of accumulation. That's the good news. Now, in terms of temperatures, let's take a re readings at the area. To the north, Waukegan is at 16, Aurora is at 14. The lakefront, the warm spot, if you can call it that, at 21. The wind's still very strong, so let's calculate wind chill indices at this hour. 18 below at O'Hare, 22 below at Aurora, 13 below at Midway, and again, Waukegan at 6 below, the lakefront at 12 below. It is extremely cold, but as cold as it is here with a reading of 15, look back to the north and west. Bismarck at 25 below, Bemidji at 23 below. These are actual air temperatures. Now we'll look at the wind chill readings. 62 degrees below zero at this hour right now is what it feels like in Bemidji. 59 below in Omaha. We are currently right around 18 below, so it's cold and getting colder. Satellite picture shows clear skies back to the west. That'll bring us some sunshine tomorrow afternoon, but still quite a bit of cloud cover throughout tonight and early tomorrow, and a little precipitation still falling from the clouds for us. Most of this, as I mentioned, is relatively light snow. The heavier snow is still confined up to the portions of Wisconsin and Minnesota and pushing off to the north and east. So uh, the flakes will fly overnight until early tomorrow, but again, we're talking about very little accumulation, probably an inch or less. Now, overnight, we'll be into the single digits, but sub-zero wind chills. Back to the north and west, 30 below will be the actual overnight low temperature in Bemidji, or make that Bismarck. Now, forecast for the overnight hours. It'll be very windy and much colder, a little bit of light snow in the area, single digital temperatures, but wind chills to 40 below. Tomorrow morning, a bitterly cold wind, still some light snow or flurries in the area, 6 to 12, but wind chills again to 30 below, bundle up. In the afternoon, it'll be brighter, but still bitter, temperatures in the teens, but below zero wind chills. Saturday, well off to a little bit of a sunshine start, but then we'll get a little dusting of light snow as the day wears on. But notice the temperatures are going up, so if you can survive the next 36 hours, at least things will be moderating. But wow, what a day. Really is. Thanks. Thanks, Andy. In a minute, a winning streak for the Bulls just goes right on. And next, the marriage they said wouldn't last, didn't. Later on The Tonight Show, Jerry Seinfeld's got a big surprise for Jay. What kind of comedy is this? Yes, then Jay's got an even bigger surprise for Richard Dreyfus. You have to watch this. No, no. Yeah. Plus, the presidential pyramid with Bill Hartman and Wings' Crystal Bernard. The little Rock Hotel room. Places you take off your pants. Yes, thank you. Stay up for Jay with Richard Dreyfus and Jerry Seinfeld. Then on Late Night, at the Vegas video show, Andy finds the good stuff. And Conan's met with power. We're going to fire a few people. Plus Norm MacDonald and Andy if Donald. only they made it. Tonight, critics are calling Mr. Holland's Opus one of the best pictures of the year. If you have the
passion, then you ought to do what you want to do. A flat-out wonderful movie. You love music, and you made the kids love it with you. Richard Dreyfuss is definitely Oscar-bound. It's in your head. It's in your heart. And Siskel and Ebert give it two thumbs up. Come meet your son. The best of the best. Richard Dreyfuss. Mr. Holland's Opus, rated PG. Starts Friday, January 19th at a theater near you. We designed the new Acura TL series to provide you with so much comfort you'll be constantly reminded you're in a luxury car. And then we gave it an incredible lease offer that allows you to enjoy the rest of life's luxuries. Because after all, driving a luxury car should mean not having to compromise on anything. Lease rates as low as $369 a month with zero down are now available on the TL series. Got an eating machine at home? Well, now you can fill them up without emptying your wallet. At KFC, our freshly baked chunky chicken pot pie with a biscuit is now at a special January price, just $3.49. Everybody needs a little KFC. Rich milk, chocolate, nougat, and caramel, but only three grams of fat, 90 calories. Is this a dream? You bet it's a dream. The new dream candy bar. Unlucky number. Unlucky number. <laughs> lucky number. Uh-oh. Unlucky number. <laughs> lucky number. $200,000 in cash prizes. Just buy the Sunday Sun-Times, save your TV preview, and check the paper all week for your lucky number. Oh, unlucky number. Lucky number. The Sun-Times TV preview lucky number contest. More cash, more prizes, more chances to win. The year-and-a-half marriage of Michael Jackson to Lisa Marie Presley is apparently ending in divorce. Lisa Marie filed the papers in Los Angeles today, citing irreconcilable differences. The papers say Jackson and Presley have been separated for more than a month, and there's no hope of saving their marriage. Jackson's publicist said the two have agreed to go their separate ways, but remain good friends. No comment from you, thank you, John. Let's just move right to the Bulls. Well, the Raptors are a pretty tough expansion team, but number 23 comes to the rescue. Now, for all those fans who are happy the Bulls are winning, but bored because they're making it look way too easy, tonight is your night. And while the Bulls do have to work hard for their money, they manage to survive an attack by the NBA's version of Barney the Purple Dinosaur. The largest basketball crowd ever in Canada, over 36,000 at Skydome. The main attraction, of course, that handsome announcer that doesn't take any bull off anyone, not even himself. First half, Barney's do look strong. Tracy Murray to the rack. Ronald leads by seven at the intermission. Third quarter, more purple b-ball eaters. Damon Stoudemire, the super rookie, the big-time triple. Phil Jackson thinking, we can't lose to a bunch of dinosaurs, can we? But after shooting blanks most of the night, here they come. Scotty Pippen, the foul, and the friendly roll. Then it's up to Mike. First off, Jordan, three-point land. Money. The fade. Money. The turn, more money. You can't stop him. Then the Fred Astaire move. Outstanding. Jordan brings him back. 38 points. Not yet Miller time. It's time to body bash. Now Barney's with a chance to tie down three. One final try. Oliver Miller about a mile away. Somehow I don't think that's Oliver's shot. Bulls hang on. That's 10 in a row. 92-89. And following the game, somebody asked, did the Bulls take the Raptors too lightly? The options for I don't know when you take them lightning. It's just the fact we just couldn't hit anything in the first half. And then we threw up and couldn't hit it, you know. And uh, one for Mike in the second, second half, we would have lost this game easily. Yeah. It's a good test for us, you know. I think, you know, in close games, you learn more about the character of this team, how to bond together defensively as well as go to the right keys and right people in the offensive end and, and capitalize on those situations. Ten straight victories for the Chicago Bulls. Now the only thing up with the Fighting Illini this year a downer of a Big Ten season. Illinois off to its worst conference start in over 60 years. They take another dive this time to Iowa. Lou Henson can't figure it out, but Jerry Hester does on this one. Illinois up by nine at one point in this game in the second half. Illinois by two late. Chris Kingsbury buries the three. Iowa rolls on 82-79. Also in a conference, Funk, Loyola, and head coach Ken Burmeister. He can't take it anymore. The Ramblers, Charles Smith provides some minor relief to steal the drive, but not enough against Butler. Ramblers go down 67-59.
Also from the college hoop, Northern Illinois beats Cleveland State 76-62. And a tough break for Gary Suter, the Blackhawks defenseman, will miss the All-Star game with a knee injury. And love it or not, well, interleague baseball coming to a ballpark near you sometime soon. Major League Baseball owners green light the move, and with player approval, the interleague play will take place in 1997. We finish up and go back to the NBA. Charles Outlaw, not even close, but look at the reaction here. Yeah, I... Then he looks over the coach like, he's going to kick me off or what? That's it. That's sports. Thank you, John. A rock-hard legal policy. That's still to come. But first, the lottery numbers. From the Channel 5 Newsroom. Well, join us for first thing in the morning for all the news you need to know. That is, before you head out the door and coffee cam, tomorrow serves up a bagel extravaganza. And I'm Brant Miller. A much colder day. The complete forecast tomorrow morning. Tomorrow on First Thing in the Morning. Committed to Chicago. control because we all have places to go looks like it's going to be freezing rain all day hazardous driving conditions stevens installed harlan to mccormick place snow coming down steadily expected to get worse throughout the day kennedy very slow junction to the cave to above predicted tonight gapers block causing a jam up on the dan ryan snow and sleet everywhere good morning chicagoland it's going to be another character builder today don't let winter slow you down. Take Metro. One of the most provocative actors of his generation. One of the most passionate actresses of our time. You are making it so difficult to help you. You leave. From Tim Robbins. Based on a true story. Blame the government. You blame drugs. You blame the kids for being there. What about Matthew Pontulet? I ain't no victim. Susan Sarandon, Sean Penn. Dead Man Walking. Dead Man Walking. Rated R. Starts tomorrow at select theaters. This is where I work, but this is what my job is all about. We're a nonprofit recycling company, and we look for help wherever we can get it. I wanted to look for the best way that I could help my community. A lot of our help comes from Janet Maxwell and the folks at Walmart. All you have to do is get out there, participate, and be willing to learn. She's on about every committee that's available around this area. I think it's very important to be the green coordinator for Walmart. And I'm absolutely positive everyone can make a difference with recycling. Finally, don't mess with the Hard Rock Cafe. In Salinas, California, school officials decided to reward good students with a series of motivational breakfasts. They called it the Hard Work Cafe. Then came a letter from a Chicago law firm telling them, cease and desist. The Hard Rock Cafe lawyers accuse the school of a trademark infringement. They say they go after anybody who uses at least two out of those three names, even if it's for a good cause. School dropped the name because they're between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> and I think we can still legally use that phrase. That's the news this Thursday. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Real-time closed captioning of the Channel 5 News has been brought to you by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Hurry in for Armstrong Ceiling Savings at Menards. Save on many styles of ceiling panels. They're easy to install, plus washable. Two by four foot textured panels are just $1.19 after rebate. Then give your home a new look with Dutch Boy Paint. Dirt Fighter Latex is on sale in three beautiful finishes, starting at just $8.65 a gallon. Menards puts the savings into Dutch Boy Paint. Save big money at Menards.